Today I've got some exciting news for you about solar eclipses. We are going to have our choice of what one is going to be the best, so I'm really excited about that. I'm going to tell you some really big news that I have learned about crew members with uh, especially the cabin stewards, really important things you need to know. If you get nothing else from me today, this is what I want you to remember, as well as lots more here on board the Discovery Princess. So let's go ahead and get started. Hi there, this is Allison with Let's Go Travel Tips. Today is Thursday, it is April 11th of 2024. So let's start off first talking about the eclipse news. So if you're new around here, um, Princess has announced that they are going to be running a cruise that will include the total eclipse that is going to take place on August 12th of 2026. They have not released their Europe 2026 ceilings yet, so we don't know what that's going to look like. Don't know the itinerary, all we know is they have said the Sky Princess will be doing that cruise. Now, really exciting news out today is um, Cunard has announced that three, three of their ships are going to be doing very different itineraries, but they are all going to be in locations where you can view the total solar eclipse. So I'm gonna tell you the itineraries, and um, then I'm gonna be excited to see what Princess announces, and then we're gonna pick whatever's best, or what we think is best, okay? So we'll have a lot to think about here. So first of all, the Queen Mary two she is going to be embarking on um, a 14 night voyage through Norway and Iceland. It's a round trip. Um, I don't know where it's round trip from, it doesn't say. Oh. Wow. You can just talk to me over holidays. Okay, thank you. So the big deal about this 14 night cruise is that you are going to embark over in Europe. I don't see the point of origination on that one yet, but you're going to have an overnight in Reykjavik, Iceland on the night of August 12th. So you're going to be able to see the eclipse from Iceland. And from what I can tell about that path of totality, um, it gets broader the further it goes out. So um, you're going to be able to see it there in Iceland from a lot more locations. I will tell you, when Gordon and I visited Iceland, Iceland took me by surprise. I knew that it was going to be beautiful. I expected it to be different, but you know what? It stole my heart. I want to go back to Iceland again. I didn't even want to go that bad the first time. Gordon's the one that wanted to go, and so off we went. But Iceland is somewhere that has to be on your list. If you have not been to Iceland, you need to go to Iceland. So anyway, you get that overnight there in Reykjavik and then the cruise ends in New York City. Then the Queen Anne is going to traverse, it says, Spain and France. It's a seven night voyage that leaves Southampton on August 9th and returns on August 16th. And with that, you get a lot of um, your parts there, especially mostly in Spain and a little bit in France. And then finally, the Queen Victoria is going to be doing a Western Mediterranean voyage that um, it goes from Rome to Barcelona and that is from August 10th through the 17th and so you get um, think of your traditional Western Mediterranean cruise those are the parts you're gonna stop at so honestly I hope that we absolutely love the itinerary on the Sky Princess but you know what there are gonna be a lot of options and I love that because this sailing for the Discovery Princess sold out so quickly once they changed the itinerary for the Emerald Princess so that that ship would also be viewing the Eclipse that sailing sold out so quickly so I I'm really happy that there will be other cruise lines doing these sailings so that people um, across all different um, kinds of cruise lines will have the chance to view this next eclipse. Now I don't know, we've not heard anything yet officially from Royal Caribbean, your Norwegian, Celebrity, they have not announced anything so I'll be really anxious to see if they announce anything as well. But I am so excited about this. I also wanted to show you uh, the whole voyage has been so special and um, I'll show you the photos that we ordered. I went down to pick them up. They weren't quite ready. They had additional photos to order today and so we've done that of the eclipse but uh, part of the whole deal is we got to get our very own um, signed by the captain our solar eclipse viewing certificate so I thought you might enjoy seeing that. Every time that we have passed into the Arctic Circle we've received one of these. We received one when we went to Antarctica. 
this solar eclipse. I'm trying to think of anything else. If anyone has received a um, certificate on any other voyage, let us know what it is. I think it's really fun when they do this. It's a really nice keepsake of the event that you were able to attend on your cruise. Now, another quick note, this is just really informational for you when you go on a cruise that has any special destination as part of it, a special event when you're on board, you know what, go check the photo area soon, go check the gift shop, because sometimes they will have very unique things to purchase. Yesterday, they started selling, um, uh, the day before yesterday, actually, um, so today is Thursday, the eclipse was Tuesday, Tuesday evening, they start in the afternoon, they started selling like mugs that would have a picture of the ship on it, with the uh, um, total eclipse thing on it and everything. They have run out of the mugs. They ran out of those really quickly. And um, last night we ordered, they had a really cool photo of the ship they had different ones to choose from with the path and um, all the different phases of the eclipse going across the top. I'll show it to you when we pick it up. But my um, my thought to you is go early in that whole process because now they have run out of the metal things. You cannot order more of those. Um, they have some photos that they put on those little wood blocks. Maybe you've seen those. They do those, you know, everywhere from Walgreens to cruise ships but they are getting low on the wood blocks when we were just down there. But they have a lot of photos that are just printed out on photo paper that you can also purchase. And so get yourself, um, whenever you're on a cruise, I remember when we went to Antarctica, there was a book about um, the whole voyage and a lot of what you were going to see that was written by someone who is not, it's not available on Amazon, but it was in the gift shop. A few people got it, but then it sold out. And so next time I go to Antarctica, I am going to go there right away and hopefully they will have them again. Just keep that in mind um, because you like to think something's going to be available for the whole voyage, but often it's not. Okay, so now we're going to talk about crew members. And, um, it, and the reason that I'm telling you this is because um, there are two reasons. So first of all, I had a really nice visit with a room steward last night. And um, as I, I was heading off to dinner and going down the hall and someone said hi, and so we visited for a few minutes. They have 18 rooms that each um, cabin steward is in charge of themselves. Here on Princess, they um, service them in the morning and in every evening as well. And they take really good care of us. Ours has been doing an excellent job. Her name is Victoria. She is she is amazing. But what I wanted to tell you about this is in the course of conversation, they were mentioning how important the surveys are. And I know because you know what, our um, room steward has mentioned this to us a couple of times already. She's been really sweet to a couple of times, put these papers on the bed for us to fill out. So when I'm done with my video, we're gonna fill them out and take them down to customer services. But also she mentioned at the end of the cruise that survey you get is so very important. And I knew that that was important. We always fill them out. We have filled these out for, crew members before who have done such a nice job for us. But here's something to keep in mind. Even if you're someone who doesn't tend to want to fill things out like that, start filling them out and write down the name of the crew members who take good care of you so that you can mention them by name. Because I don't know what the deal is with all of the different crew members on board, but with our cabin steward, if they do not receive six, six, which seems like a lot to me, if they do not receive six um, surveys that their name is mentioned in uh, for a cruise, then they have to do extra what they call ocean duty. I don't know what that is, but it was really clear that you, you have to work more hours and uh, you don't get as much rest if you don't get those um, at least six. If you get more, um, like if you get 10, I think, I am not sure I remember exactly, but I think it's if you get 10, then you get a day off. And so I just want you to think about what you're doing. And I know I am someone who for a really long time, I would fill things out. Um, and if I missed one here and there, I wouldn't worry about it, but it really does matter. And so I think it's important that we take a minute to go out of our way for the people who go out of their way for us because uh, it matters a whole lot more than we ever thought. So keep that in mind the next time you're on a ship and put in the comments below anything else that you think we should know about that. I know that we've got a lot of people who cruise often here, so put in the comments anything else you know about that. I really look forward to reading your comments. Let me know too, like, 
the whole deal with the eclipse cruise what you're thinking about that um really quickly i've learned a few things um during this group cruise so when we went on our northern lights group cruise we ended up with a 7:40 dining time if you're asking for group dining time they the times that um that depending on availability the times that are available to groups are 5 5 20 7 40 and 8 and when we got on the island princess we were assigned 7 40 okay now here's an important thing that i've learned on this cruise and i want to get your feedback on this uh, so on this one we have been dining together at 5 p.m every evening it's been absolutely wonderful. Gordon and I have gone the nights that um, when we had 360 and when we had Rudy's, we still went so we could see everyone and have a chance to visit and get caught up. We had a lovely time. But the thing that I have noticed with having dinner at five o'clock is we have missed every sail away on this whole cruise. And you know, we often do our live sail aways because then it gives us a chance to answer your question, show you how beautiful the port is. We love that. But also forever, Gordon and I have been out on our balcony or up on the top decks during the sail away because we enjoy it that much. It's a really special time for us. We thoroughly enjoy it. And so with having dinner at five, we have missed that. Another thing that has stood out to me is like this evening um, is the Captain Circle um, cocktail party and it's at 615. And so since I can't be two places at one time, um, I don't think we're going to get to go to this. And well, I know we're not because <laughs> I can't be two places at one time. And so put in the comments um, what you think about everything. I know that there are a lot of perks to eating early. I know some people have to eat early for medical reasons. I know some people like to eat early. One thing that's been really nice is then when it's time for the entertainment for the evening to start up, then we're done, right? You can still hit that 7.30 show, or even if you want to hit a 7 o'clock show, um, you know, music somewhere, it's not a problem. But like I said, it makes you miss a lot of things on the other end. And um, they do run, you know, the later show, so you can always pick that up. Tonight they're doing Spotlight Bar one time. This is our... It's, I'll talk to you about that in a minute. But so anyway, this would be what we would call the second formal night. And so they're running Spotlight Bar, but just one time. So that'll just be at the earlier time, but we'll be done in time to go see that. And so let me know what you think about all of this in the, in the comments, would you? I have a lot to think about here and the best way to run things in the future. So the thing I wanted to let you know is traditionally, um, depending on the length of the cruise, you have, you know, two or three, sometimes more, if it's a longer cruise, of the formal nights. I've noticed on this cruise that the first um, formal night, they called a formal night. This will be our second formal night, but instead of calling it a formal night, they call it a dress to impress night. And um, that doesn't really change too much what I'm going to wear. Gordon brought a suit. I brought... Um, some skirts and tops that's what i chose this time and so i'm just gonna wear that again but um it, tell me what the difference to you is between formal night and dress to impress dress to impress surely is more casual but let me know if it makes a difference in what you wear to dinner and everything so as we think about what time we have been eating on this um, cruise at 5 p.m i just wanted to make it super clear we have thoroughly enjoyed getting the chance to eat with everyone in our group some people come some nights some people come all the nights but it has been absolutely wonderful so it's not the company it's just the time that i am trying to figure out what was like what's the best time to do this so that everyone can do everything they want and get to enjoy dinner together if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet will you please hit that subscribe button we need to have you with us we'd love to have you with us so please hit that subscribe button we appreciate the support and also if you appreciate my um, updates would you please give this video a thumbs up as well that really helps us an awful lot too so thank you again I want to bring you up to date really quickly and let you know that um, I haven't talked about entertainment a whole lot here on the Discovery Princess, so let me talk about that here for a minute. We have had excellent, excellent, excellent music on this trip. We have had um, a group named the Mockingbirds that come and sing and everybody dances and has a fun time in the piazza. We have an excellent um, singer up in Crooners that is just absolutely wonderful. If you caught my picture on um, Facebook the other night showing how empty the piazza was like at 1140 in the evening, um, the Mockingbirds, that group had played until 11 and then everybody left. And so we just sat there and enjoyed the beautiful piazza. We got a drink and just um, listened to the singer up there in Crooners. He is that good. And so thoroughly enjoyed that. We have had a pianist on board. 
We've had um, violinists, I believe it is, but a strings group. We've had mariachis on board um, singing for us for everybody to dance and have a fun time. There have been lots, there's been line dancing classes and um, theme nights in the piazza for dancing. I think tonight is Summer of Love is the theme for the dancing in the piazza. Um, yeah, like exercise classes. I watched, um, I think it was Zumba this morning. They were having a fun time and then line dancing. It's, they have really gone out of their way to have excellent um, shows going on. They've had some just uh, like singer production shows in the theater. Uh, the other night we went to one, I think it was called Show Tunes or Show Some Something. Uh, we've been to rock opera, um, just a whole variety. There's been a comedian on board. I haven't caught the comedian and uh, they have just done a really good job. The crew members have, there are so many activities, so much trivia, people are loving trivia. The Princess Live Theater here on the Discovery Princess is different than it is on some of the ships because it doesn't have the wall. So it is completely open. It's got um, more seating than you get in a lot of Princess Live um, areas. And then, um, so it's open to the walkway there behind, by it so people can sit and they've been bringing out some folding chairs. There have been so many people, so people have been thoroughly enjoying that. We've got Let's Go family members that have thoroughly um, been doing a really good job with the trivia. And then um, what else do they have? Uh, just a lot going on all the time. And so I just want you to know that if you're someone that gets easily bored on a cruise, I don't think you're gonna get bored on the Discovery Princess. And I would say the same thing for the Island Princess. Remember, it was a different kind of voyage. We went clear up to Alta Norway. That was in focus of the Northern Lights. And so it was another really special cruise um, with different things, but they had a lot of activities during the day. And uh, just wanted to let you know, if you've got questions about any of that, put it in the comments. I'm really tempted to book Rudy's again. It was that good, but I think we're going to wait until we're on the Discovery Princess um, at the end of July for our group cruise to Alaska. So let me know if you've got questions about anything. I will see you all here again tomorrow and I'll be talking to you all again really soon. You all take really good care. God bless you. Love you. Bye-bye.